MS Excel 2010. Do you like math? Doing sums, calculations, tables and problems? Well, whether you're an expert or not, Microsoft Excel will certainly make it easy for you. Excel can be defined as a spreadsheet program that allows you to store, organize and analyze data and information in tabular format. Microsoft Excel is a part of Microsoft Office package developed by Microsoft Corporation. You must have seen your mother preparing a list for grocery products or your teachers preparing the examination timetable. Why do they make lists or tables? This is because putting numbers or data in tables makes them easier to understand. This is why MS Excel permits you to arrange your data so as to view various factors from different perspectives. Let's open the program and see what all it can do. To open Microsoft Excel 2010, click on Start button. Go to All Programs. From here, select Microsoft Office. Find and click on Microsoft Excel 2010. A blank workbook with a blank spreadsheet will open in MS Excel 2010. When you see the spreadsheet, it is arranged in the form of a table. Let us now look at all the parts of Excel window. Title Bar A horizontal bar at the top of the window having these three components. Quick Access Toolbar at the left, File Name at Center and Minimize, Maximize and Close buttons at the right. Cell the intersection of row and column is known as a cell. A cell is identified by its cell address. So the address of the first cell is A1. Cell pointer. A rectangular highlighter which indicates the active cell in the spreadsheet is known as cell pointer. It is moved by arrow keys or by a left click using the mouse. Active cell. The active cell or the highlighted cell is the cell which is selected and can be used for entering data. Data can be inserted in active cell only. Cell range. The combination of more than one adjacent cell is known as cell range. Cell range address contains only two values, the starting and ending cell address. Row. A row is a horizontal collection of values in a worksheet. Rows can be identified by the number. Column. A column is a vertical group of values in a worksheet. It can be identified by the characters. Name box. This box stores the cell address of the current cell. Cell address is column name and row name put together. A cell formed by intersection of column G and row 18 will have its cell address G18. Formula bar. It displays the data of formula being entered in the current cell. Page view. Excel provides three page views, normal, page layout and page break preview. Normal view is the default worksheet view. The other views are used for setting page dimensions while taking printouts. Status bar. The horizontal bar at the bottom of the window is called the status bar. It shows you the status of data entry in current cell. Worksheets. Each Excel file is called a workbook. Like a Word document has pages, an Excel workbook has worksheets. You can rename, move, copy or delete these worksheets. However, every workbook must have at least one worksheet. A worksheet is a grid of cells. Cells are made up of rows and columns. Worksheet begins with row number 1 and column A. Each cell contains a number 
text and formula. A workbook is a set of worksheets that you can use to organize various kinds of related information. When you open the program, a blank workbook has initially three worksheets. You can add more as per your need. To create a new workbook, you can open another blank workbook. Entering data in a worksheet. To enter data in any cell of the worksheet, we have to make the cell active. To enter data in any cell in MS Excel 2010, follow these steps. Click on the cell to select it or move cell pointer to the cell for making it active. Start typing from the current cell which is A1. Type the data in the cell using keyboard keys and create a table and then press enter key to move to the next line. Now that you know how to enter data, you are ready to let the computer do all the calculations for you. MS Excel 2010 can perform many different calculations. You just have to give it a formula. We can do arithmetic calculations like addition, subtraction, multiplication and division in MS Excel 2010. To get the correct result, it is very important to enter the formula correctly. A formula always starts with an equal to sign, followed by cell value or cell address and operators like a plus sign for addition, minus for subtraction, an asterisk for multiplication, division signs or exponent signs. Let us first learn how to add numbers together by using auto sum. If you want to find the sum of particular values, you can use auto sum command in MS Excel. Excel auto sum command automatically enters a formula to sum number in your worksheet. The auto sum button is available in two locations on the Excel ribbon. The first is through the home tab then editing group in which you find the auto sum option. The second one is in formulas tab, then function library group and auto sum option. To use auto sum, follow these steps. Select the cell immediately below the last value in the column. Click the auto sum button on either the home or formulas tab. Press the enter key to complete the formula. The sum of the numbers will be displayed. There is another way to calculate the sum of a set of numbers in Excel. This is called sum by formula. Formula is a mathematical relationship written using symbols. To use sum formula, let us take an example of a set of data which tells us the numbers of items sold in a shop on each day. We want to find the total sales. Follow these steps to create a formula to find the total. Add a new column heading total to the table after Saturday column. Click on cell H2 and type is equal to. After equal to sign, Write the complete formula using cell addresses and then press enter. Repeat the same for other items by changing cell addresses. Saving a workbook. You can save your spreadsheet for future use. Follow these simple steps to save your Excel file. Click on Office button. Select Save or Save As option from the menu. Save as dialog box will appear. Select the location and enter the file name in the file name box and click save button. Your file will be saved with the name given. The file name and title bar will change from book 1 to whatever name you have assigned to the file.